I believe you can answer your own data analysis questions. Do you? You should. Stick around for another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss, and it's my goal to help you to grow in confidence to ask and answer questions about the world around us using data. Former U.S. President and Army General Dwight Eisenhower once said, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. That is especially true for research projects. If we don't have a plan for getting somewhere, then we're destined to get nowhere. I hate working in the midst of chaos. Can you tell? We've spent the last two episodes getting our project organized, and we haven't touched any data or code yet. If you have ever taken over a project from a former member of your research group, then you'll know the frustration of trying to find things and make sense of what they did. Your first step would be to get the project organized, right? Well, today we'll also talk a bit more about organization and how we can use issues in GitHub to give ourselves a to-do list and use branches in Git to systematically work through those issues. This is loosely similar to what is called Git flow or GitHub flow by software engineers. We'll use GitHub flow to finally download some data that we'll be using to determine to what degree inter and intragenomic variation limit the ability to interpret amplicon sequence variants, also called ASVs, as a biologically coherent entity that the proponents of ASVs claim. As we go along, we'll see the command line and git commands that we saw in the last two episodes, so we can continue to practice those skills while learning new git tools. Please take the time to watch today's episode, follow along at your computer, and attempt the exercises. Don't worry if you're not sure how to solve the exercises, at the end, I'll provide solutions. In the notes below is a link to a blog post that accompanies this video. That blog post includes GitHub. reference notes You'll and links that, my, that are intended to be a supplement uh, to this account, video. P. Schloss, Please don't and forget to like and subscribe to the Schloss Schloss underscore RRN analysis underscore XXXX underscore 2020. I recall that XXXX is a placeholder for a future journal title. Who knows where this is going to go? I'd like to think that we'd get it published at some point, but we'll see. Um, so, uh, hopefully this looks familiar from our last Code Club episode, where if you went through all the exercises, we wound up getting everything that was in our project directory um, pushed up into GitHub. So what we're going to work on today is something that's loosely called GitHub Flow. Git Flow is another name for it. Oh, I think they're kind of a distinction without a difference. Um, and again, these are ideas that are stolen from software engineering and that we're adapting for our purposes with data analysis. So if you look at uh, the top of our repository here on GitHub, you'll see that the second tab is called Issues. So if I click on Issues, uh, this opens a window that contains what's called an issue tracker. And so issue trackers are used on projects to keep track of different things that come up. Uh, somebody might write in an issue and say, it'd be really cool if you added this feature, or I'm running into this bug when I do this, how can we fix it? We're going to use issues as a to-do list of things that we want to do as we go along in our project. After we get some issues populated into the issue tracker, we'll go back to the command line and see how we can systematically work through those uh, using, again, this process of GitHub flow, using Git, as well as some of the tools we've already talked about so far in um, working on this project. OK, so we don't have any issues. The first thing we want to do to open issue is to click on this green button for new issue. And there's a window here for a title and for us to write in a comment. And so these kind of create a series of threads. And so each tr issue becomes a thread. And so I can put in my initial ideas for an issue. Uh, my collaborator might comment on it. I might come back and comment on the thread, um, adding different um, bits of information as we go along. And so the first issue that I want to add in here is get files from uh, the RRNDB. OK, so that's going to be the title of my issue. Now, I'm going to go back and Google. Well, I have it here in my, <laughs> in my history because we were looking at it in a previous episode. Um, and I will come back here and I will say uh, the RRN um, has downloads. And so if I go over to downloads, there's a tab for download. Uh, maybe this would be actually the better link to give. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and put in oops, that we can use for our project. I don't know what all of the files are, 
but let's get all of them and put them into uh, data references. So this back ticks that I'm using uh, is a special type of thing uh, to format this as code or as a directory in this case. Um, and so there's these four files. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy the links to all four of them here. the RDP. Like I said, I'm not totally sure what those two are. I think it's some information about the taxonomy. Uh, it might be kind of the number of copies that each uh, genome has of the ribosomal RNA database, uh, or, uh, different copies of the ribosomal RNA operon. Um, and so this third file is the FASTA file. And then this fourth file, um, I'm not really sure what that is. I think it might be kind of um, a database of sorts. And so these are the files. We're going to go ahead and put them, like I said, into data references. You can click on this preview tabs, uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, this is uh, some syntax highlighting uh, using a, a language called Markdown. I don't know if it's exactly a language. It's a Markdown um, way of formatting text in a pretty simple way. Another thing that we can do is we could turn this, into, this downloads into a link uh, by doing an open and close brace, followed by the URL in uh, round parentheses. We can preview it here and see what it looks like, right? Cool. We can also make a list uh, with a star at the beginning of each line. Preview that, and you see it's a bulleted list. OK, cool. So I think that's enough information for right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, save this as a new issue. And so now we have a first issue, get files from RNDB number one. If I click on issues, I see I've got uh, a table that will be populated by all the other issues that I obtain, uh, all the other issues I generate. So the next issue will be the get the Silva reference files. And so we're gonna need uh, the Silva uh, reference alignment to align our uh, sequences from the uh, RNDB so that uh, we can make sure we're looking at a consistent region within the gene. Okay, so the 16S gene has these nine variable regions. We could certainly look over the full length of the gene, uh, but Unless you're doing something pretty special, like some pack biosequencing approaches, which don't generate a ton of data, you're probably not looking at the full length thing. You're probably looking at something like V4, or V34, or V45, which are different variable regions within the 16S gene. And those are about 250 nucleotides. So if, a line, if we align our uh, different operons from these genomes, we can then easily, more easily extract those different variable regions to then look at um, how redundant they are or how unique they are within and between different genomes. Okay, um, And so we can get this from the mother wiki at, um, and so let me go to mother.org. And if I go to, um, let's see, I think it's going to be forward slash wiki forward slash Silva reference files. What we want is this recreated C database from release 138. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put another URL in here for the mother wiki. Um, we would like uh, the recreated seed uh, database from release 138. And that's going to be, let's get this link. Oh, not that one. Uh, it's going to be this. So I'll copy that link and put it in here in my issue tracker and look at it just to make sure it looks good. Okay. Uh, and so where do we want to put this? We're going to want to put this um, into uh, data references. And I'm going to submit a new issue. And you know, now that I think about it, I think I may have said I wanted to put the RRNDB also into data references. 
It's not where I want it. I want this to go into data raw. So I'll say on second thought, let's put these files into data raw. So they're not really raw files. Um, we could have created a directory like data rndb, but I think data raw would be much better than data references. Uh, these are gonna be the raw files that we're gonna work with. We're gonna do some manipulation on them and then uh, do something else, do other things with them, right? And so I think data raw is probably a good directory to put them in. So I'll go ahead and add that as a comment. And so now this thread, as you can see, has uh, two comments on it. Uh, they're both from me, right? So these are notes to myself. So it's in a way having these links here is really nice because then I don't have to go back through all the different websites. I've got the links here and say I come back to this in a couple of weeks, I'd have to go back and find those other websites, but I've got them right here, which makes life much easier. Okay, let's create another issue. And so I want to install uh, Mother into my project. So we want to get a Mother for aligning sequences and perhaps other functions uh, throughout the project. Should install into uh, code, uh, sorry, code forward slash mother. So I don't want it to, I don't want, I want it to be a directory within code. Um, also, we don't want to track this with version control, so we should ignore it. So there's really no reason to, to track it because it's something that we're installing. We're not gonna be manipulating it or anything. Um, because of this though, we should leave installation instructions in uh, code readme.md and we should indicate the version of mother in a list of dependencies in the main readme file, right? So we can get version 1.44.1 at, or let's just say the latest version latest version of mother is 1.44.1 .1, and we'll go ahead and create this as a link also and we can go to mother is on github so we'll do github.com forward slash mother forward slash mother and uh, you'll see that there are releases down here on the bottom right of my window at least. And so if I click on this latest, this is the release we want. And you'll see down here that there's different versions of Mother that can be installed. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy a link to this page and then put that in here in my uh, spot for the link. And I'll preview it. And that looks good. And so we'll submit a new issue. Great, so now we have three issues. I'm gonna create a fourth issue. Don't worry, we won't go through all of these issues today. Uh, the fourth issue is gonna to be to align the RRNDB FASTA sequences uh, file to Silva uh, seed reference. And so to do this, we'll use mothers uh, align.seeks function to align the sequences in the um, to the to the silver reference alignment. Okay. Very good. And I think that's it for now. We might come back and add other things to these issues later on. Very good, so if we look at our issues, we now see that we have four issues in our issue tracker. And um, again, these are very helpful because it helps me to organize what's going on. If, again, if I walk away from this project for a few weeks, I can come back and see what the issues were. I can remind myself the conversations that we had. And so the first issue that I'm gonna work on is issue number one. Now we wouldn't necessarily always go in numerical order, but 
Uh, it's the beginning of the project. I kind of have a good idea of where things are going. And so I want to start with issue one. And so again, what we want to do is we want to download uh, these four files. We want to decompress them and download them into data raw. Okay. And so this is issue one. And so again, what we're in the midst of doing is something called GitHub flow. I'm in my uh, project working directory. I can do git status and see that I'm on branch master. Everything is up to date with uh, the GitHub um, hosted version of the repository. Nothing to commit. The tree is clean. We're good to go for starting our day. So to do GitHub flow, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a branch. Now you can think of the master branch that we're on as like the big trunk of the project and things that bifurcate off of that are different branches, right? And I guess not tre most trees don't do this, but eventually that branch will feed back into the main trunk of the tree. So uh, we can look at the types of branches that we already have by saying git branch. And we see that there's only one branch, it's master. Uh, it's green in this case, and there's a star, which tells us we're on the master branch. I can create another branch, also with the git branch command, by doing git branch, and I'll call it issue underscore one. Now, I can do git branch, and say so I have two branches, but I'm still on the master branch, right? So now what I can do is do git checkout issue one, okay? So I'm gonna check out the issue one branch. It tells me I switched to branch issue one. I can confirm this by doing git branch. I can also do git status and see that it, both of these tell me I'm on the branch issue one. I like to name my branches for the issue I'm working on. That way it's easy for me to go back and forth to the issue tracker. So what we wanna do again uh, is to get those files from the RRNDB. And so now that we're on this branch for issue one, we wanna do all the work for issue one. We're gonna commit those changes and then we're gonna merge it back into the master branch. So we'll see how this is done. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to the RRNDB and I need to download these four files to my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on these and my browser will automatically download these for me. Um, it's also trying to open these for me. It's very kind that way. Uh, that FASTA file it'll download and this TSV it'll download. So these are stored up on the database on the website as zipped files um, and it'll download them. And at least on a Mac, it'll automatically decompress them on a Windows computer, you might need to unzip them yourself. So if I look at my desktop here in my finder, I see these four files called RRNDB. What I wanna do is move those into my project directory. So I can drag these over to documents and then up to Schloss RRN there, and then data, and this is gonna go into raw. So I can double check that everything's where it's supposed to be by doing ls data forward slash raw. And I see that I now have these four RRNDB files there. It's version 5.6 I see. And so what I will now do is I will update my readme file and I will say uh, nano uh, data forward slash raw readme md and what i'm going to put in here is um, obtained files from the rr rrndb located at and then i'm going to come back to my downloads page um, uh, these are files from version 5.6 released in 2019 okay so again this is just a little bit of documentation so that when i come back later and wonder you know where did these files come from it's easy to figure that out so i'll save it with Control o hit enter to save it and Control x to bop out if i do get status i see now that i have modified my data raw readme file 
but I now have these four untracked files. So these four files are quite large. If I look at them in my finder window, uh, I see that some of them are, uh, one of them at least, the FASTA file is 129 megabytes. So that's larger than what you can actually store in a GitHub hosted repository. They limit you to 100, 100 megabytes per file or one gigabyte for the whole repository. So that's too big. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to tell Git to ignore the files in data raw. And we can do that using a file called .gitignore. So we mentioned this yesterday or in the last episode, ls-a shows you the hidden files. And so we see we have a directory called .git. Uh, this DS store um, is something that Mac throws in and we'll want to ignore that as well. Although I, it seems that it's not uh, noticing it anyway. So we'll do nano space period git ignore. So the first char character of the file is a period and then it's git ignore. And then in this directory, I'm sorry, in this file, we tell git which files to ignore. So I'm gonna say data forward slash raw. Um, and you know what, actually, I'm just gonna say data. I wanna ignore all, everything that goes into data because these files are gonna be big. Um, there's a way around to get exceptions or to force it to track certain files, like the readme files, which we'll wanna update. Uh, but for now, we're gonna ignore everything in the data directory so we don't have to worry about accidentally committing really large files to our repository. Oop. So control O, control X. If I do get status, now I see it's no longer saying that those files in data raw are untracked, but it also tells us we have an untracked file called dot get ignore. So I'm gonna go ahead and add dot get ignore to my repository, as well as the changes from data raw readme. So I can do git add period git ignore. I see that that now is a new file that's staged to be committed. I'm gonna go ahead and st stage the changes to my data raw readme file. And so it says uh, the following paths are ignored by your .git ignore files data. So use dash F if you really want to add them. So I really do want to change uh, this readme file. I really want to add the changes there. So I'll do git add hyphen F data raw readme. No more warnings or error messages. Get status. I now see that I've, um, I've staged the the new git ignore file, as well as the changes to data raw readme. And I can do git commit dash m. And I can then say download uh, rrndb files. Now I can do something kind of clever here uh, that there's a really nice tie in between git and GitHub. That if GitHub sees a message in one of my commits that says something like closes number one, then it will automatically close that issue for me. So let's do that. We can do closes number one. Okay. And so we see our working tree is clean. We're on branch issue one, we're in good shape. Now what we wanna do is merge this change back into our master branch. So we previously used git checkout issue one. Well, now we're gonna do git checkout master. And so now I'm switched to branch master. And if I do get branch, I can see my two branches and I can now merge issue one into master using git merge. So I'll do git merge issue underscore one. We see that it brings in the dot git ignore file as well as the changes to my data raw readme file. And so now this is in my um, my master branch, okay? And so I could do nano uh, data raw readme. I'm on the master branch and it's in here. Very good. So let's push this up to GitHub, up to our repository. So we can then do git push. It pushes it up. And I will now look at my issue tracker for issue one. And I see already uh, that it says it's been closed. So this has taken us through the process of git flow. We have an issue, we claim the issue, 
by creating a branch in our local repository. And again, my preference is to name the branch after the issue I'm working on. I can use that issue tracker to update with different bits of information I want to have. Um, but then I can come back in my branch. I then move to my branch by using git checkout issue one or whatever the issue is. I make my changes in that branch to the code. Um, and then I commit the changes on that branch. I then go back to my master branch and merge the issue back over um, to master. I can then push that up to GitHub and we're in good shape closing out the issue. Now, this might seem like a lot of extra work and to some cases it, it might be a little bit of overkill. But the nice thing about it is that if I keep these branches with my repository, I can go back and see what happened for each of those different branches. Some of the branches I might decide I don't want to fold into master because it was, an, it was a pathway of analysis that just wasn't worth pursuing. Alternatively, um, I might be working on one issue and I might decide, well, I need to put that to the side for right now so I can go work on this other issue. So I can work on multiple things at the same time without screwing up like my master branch. And so that's one of the great benefits of, of doing that. As always, I have a few exercises for you to work on now to practice the skills that we just went over in this episode of Code Club. The first exercise asks you to create a new issue. As we go through, it'd be nice to keep track of different articles and blog posts or tweets or whatever uh, resources that describe um, the use of oligotypes or exact sequence variants or amplicon sequence variants so that if we go to write this up or to do some type of project report, we'll have all that information together. So I'd like to have an issue where we're keeping a, a thread of different resources. In the second exercise, I want you to resolve issue two using GitHub flow. And in exercise three, I want you to use GitHub flow to resolve issue three. So go ahead and pause the video now, work through these three exercises, and when you're done, come back and I'll share with you how I would go about doing them. I hope you enjoyed working through these exercises and that they really helped you to learn the material better. In the first exercise, I asked you to start putting together a thread in an issue that will accumulate different reference materials related to the topics of oligotypes, amplicon sequence variants, and exact sequence variants. So I'm here in our issue tracker for the repository. I'll go ahead and click new issue and I'll say uh, generate um, resource list related to ASVs, okay? And so need to create a uh, bibliography of resources related to um, um, oligotypes, ASVs, and ESVs, and other topics, related topics. And so uh, I'll get this started, uh, but uh, in the previous Code Club episode, I created, um, I had a number of links in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bunch of these links. Uh, so I'll copy this link. This is Sue Hughes talking about SLP. I'll get this other one from uh, Murat Aaron talking about oligotyping. And let's see, uh, uh, there's this article from Callahan that really strongly ar argued for um, ESVs or ASVs. And um, uh, Noah Fear has a couple articles, uh, blog posts that I'll include. Uh, so this one is, uh, I'll say Fear heterogeneity. And then the next one is Fear as well. And this because um, lumping and splitting, so I'll just call it uh, lumping, uh, splitting, and so forth. And I think there was one more by Sun, if I recall, um, from 2013, that also looked at heterogeneity. Okay. 
So again, this is the start of a list that we can accumulate as we go through the project and as we come across different resources. So I'll go ahead and submit that um, issue, and we can add to this as we go through. Great, so that's exercise one. So the next issue was to get Silva reference files. So let me look at this. Uh, this is the link to the file uh, that we want to get, and we're going to go ahead and put this in data references. So I'll go ahead and download this. And if I come to my desktop, I see it downloads it as Silva seed b138.tar. That's still, um, it's not compressed, but it's, it's tarred together. It's um, bound together. So I can open that up. And looking at the contents here, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm not going to take the readme with me. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy these two files, the Silva Seed v138 align, Silva Seed v138.tax, and I'm going to go ahead and take this into my documents, into my project directory, into data, and then into references. Okay. And so now if I look in references, I see my Silva Seed v138 align, Silva Seed v138.tax, and what I'd like to do now is to make sure they're there in my uh, repository. So we'll do data reference. Oh, I'm not ready to do that. I need to create my branch. So I will do get branch, just to make sure I'm on master. And then I'll do get branch issue two. I will then do get checkout issue two. So I've switched to branch issue two. Again, I can double check that I'm on issue two. If I do ls data uh, references, I see that I've got my two Silva seed uh, files here, the FASTA file and the taxonomy. Oh, it's, a, it's a FASTA formatted alignment file and the taxonomy file. I'm going to go ahead and do nano data references uh, readme. And I can say downloaded. Huh. Silva B138 uh, seed file for alignment and taxonomy from. And looking back at my issue tracker, I'm going to copy this link uh, into here. And that's good. I'll go ahead and save that and exit out. If I do get status, I see that I've modified data references readme. Because I previously did uh, ignore data in the .get ignore file, it's not saving those. But to track these changes, I'm going to have to use that git add f. So git add f data references readme. And so this change is ready to be committed. And I can do git commit download um, Silva recreated seed reference closes number two. Again, saying closes and then the number of the, of the issue, when I go ahead and then push that up to GitHub, it'll automatically close the issue for me. So now I've been on my issue branch. I need to now move over to my master branch. And now I need to merge back in my issue branch. So get merge, I'm sorry, get merge issue two. We now see the changes here. Get status. And we're ahead of our origin master branch, the remote repository by one commit. We can go ahead and do get push pushes our local repository up to GitHub. Refresh this and notice that this issue is now closed. And so now if I go back to my main issues page, I see that I now have um, three remaining issues. And install mother is our next issue that we want to take on. So this third issue that we want to work on is install mother. And we want to get mother 
so that we can align those fast, that FASTA file from the RNDB against our Silva seed. We'll probably do that in the next episode or the episode after that. So we don't want to track it with version control. So we're going to put it in a directory called code forward slash mother. And we won't track it there uh, because again, we're not going to be making changes to mother. We'll be updating from there. But we do want to indicate where we got it from and the version uh, and list it as a dependency in our main readme file. So we're going to change a couple files here. And so in my repository, again, I'm on my master branch, git branch issue three, git checkout issue three, and we're on branch three. And so going back to um, uh, my issue tracker, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link to come to uh, the GitHub page for Mother. And I'm working on a Mac. And so I want this Mac OS X hyphen 10.14.zip. Um, if you're using a Windows, then you want to use Windows. If you're using Linux, you want to use Linux. I'll go ahead and download the Mac version of Mother by click on, clicking on that link. It downloads. And again, because it's a Mac, the Mac will automatically uncompress it, decompress it for me. If you're on Windows, you'll probably have to do that yourself. And if I go to my home directory, uh, sorry, my desktop directory on my home, I see that I have this mother directory and in it is everything I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this mother directory and drag it to documents, Schloss mother, and then into code. So that now in my code directory, I have a directory for mother. Okay. And that has um, everything that I need to run mother in the future. So if I come back now to my repository and I do ls code forward slash, I see that I have a mother directory. And if I look in code mother, I see everything I had just seen. So that's great. Um, I need to update the uh, readme file for my code directory. So I'll do nano code readme. And I'll say downloaded uh, version 1.4.1 of mother from, and I will grab it here. Okay. And I would like to update my main, main readme file. So I'll do nano readme. And at, down here at the bottom, I'll say dependencies. And I'll say mother version 1.44.1 and um, and that will be good. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now if I do get status, I see that I've modified my main readme, I've modified my code readme file, um, but they also have put files into code mother, but I don't wanna track that. So I'm gonna ignore this directory in git ignore. So if I do nano git ignore, now below data, I'll go ahead and do code forward slash mother, save it, drop out to quit, get status. I now see that it's no longer looking for, um, looking at code mother as being untracked, but it now comments that git ignored has been modified. So I'm gonna add these three files to the staging area and then commit them. So I'll do git add dot git ignore, read me, code read me. Those are staged, ready to be committed. Git commit dash M, and I'll then say uh, install mother to code directory. Okay. So again, I'm on my uh, issue three branch. I need to now go back to my master branch with git checkout. I can then do git merge issue three. We see the changes that it's made to master and I can then do git push. And you know what? I forgot to add to my commit message <laughs> that that closed issue three. So if I come back now to my um, 
issue tracker, install mother. So if I've forgotten to add uh, the closes issue three, what I can do is I can leave a message in here indicating um, where I closed that issue. And so I can figure that out um, back here in my terminal when I ran git commit, it put this goofy uh, code, issue three, E -O E05CFDA. So that's a identifier for the commit. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then say uh, closes closed in uh, that commit. And you'll see that it automatically uh, linked in the commit message that I had. So if you forget to put closes issue three, I do this all the time. Uh, that was not <laughs> a intentional mistake. Uh, it happens regularly. You can go ahead and grab that commit identifier. It's called a SHA, S-H-A. We'll talk about that more later. Um, you can say closed in that preview. You can see that it's hyperlinked uh, back to the commit. And then I can click close and comment. And so it'll load the comment and it will close the issue. So we've worked through three iterations of Git flow. We've filed issues. We've done quite a bit today. Um, and we've even gotten data that we can use to press on with our project. Thanks again for joining me for this week's episode of Code Club. Be sure that you spend time going through the exercises on your own to help reinforce the new skills. Even better would be for you to take the ideas we've worked through today and think about how they relate to your current projects. I'd love to see how you are adapting what I have covered in this and other Code Club episodes into your own work. Also, please let me know what types of data analysis questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them in a future episode of Code Club. Finally, please be sure to tell your friends about Code Club and to like this video, subscribe to the Rifamotos channel, and click on the bell so you know when the next Code Club episode drops. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.